Here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday, September the 26th, 2019. It's the birthday of George Gershwin, the composer, born Brooklyn, 1898, who at the age of 19, along with his childhood friend Irving Caesar, wrote a song called Swanee, which Al Jolson made into a huge hit, and George Gershwin was on his way. It's the birthday of T.S. Eliot, Thomas Stearns Eliot, born 1888, St. Louis, Missouri, where he spent the first 18 years of his life. He was a smart, hardworking young man, went off to Harvard, finished his undergraduate work and master's degree in just four years, started writing poetry at the same time. He was going to get a Ph.D. in philosophy under visiting Professor Bertrand Russell. But he went off traveling to Germany, then a year at Oxford. World War I broke out, so he couldn't come back to complete the degree. In England, he became acquainted with Ezra Pound, who became his mentor and critic. And Eliot shared with Pound a long poem he'd begun in college he'd finished three years before, which Pound encouraged Eliot to publish. And it came out in 1915, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock in Poetry Magazine. The same year, he met a very pretty young writer, Vivian Haywood, and in just three months, they were married. Bertrand Russell offered to help the young couple. They settled down in his apartment in London. Russell introduced T.S. Eliot to other writers. He lent the couple money. And almost immediately after their marriage, the Eliots discovered that they were incompatible. And it seems that Mrs. Eliot began an affair with Bertrand Russell about that time. In 1921, exhausted, suffering from overwork and marital problems, T.S. Eliot had a nervous breakdown. He went off to a sanatorium to recuperate, and it was there that he finished his long poem, The Wasteland. In 1933, T.S. Eliot began the process of legal separation from Vivian. He tried to avoid all contact with her, and she refused to accept that. She became panicky and depressed. One day she was found wandering through London at five o'clock in the morning, confused, asking passers-by if her husband had been beheaded, and she was committed to an institution. Here's a poem by Maxine Kuman, the poem entitled Encounter in August. Inside the teepee that admits sunlight to the underpart, he stands eating my Kentucky wonders, downs pod after pod, spilling the beans, the ones I'd saved for shelling out this winter, thinking soup when he'd gone deep, denned up. This is not Eden, which ran unfenced and was not intercropped, Eden, where frost never overtook a patch. We stand ten yards apart, two omnivores, not much interested in flesh. I think he ought to smell me through his greed, to hear my heart outbeat his steady chomp, but nothing interrupts his lunch. At last, he goes the way the skunk does, supreme egoist ambling into the woodlot on all fours, leaving my trellis flat and beanless. And yet I find the trade-off fair, beans and more beans for this hour of bear. Encounter in August, a poem by Maxine Kuman, from her selected poems 1960 to 1990, published by W. W. Norton and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.